Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. I want to bring a quick update on what's going on with the Arctic sea ice. And in this slide here, looking at the Arctic sea ice age. In other words, I have done in previous presentations, I've shared with you how the extent measured in square uh, in millions of kilometers, how the ice extent is reducing. I've also shared with you how the volume is also reducing. Well, the volume is a reflectance of how old the ice is itself. So if I have oceanic water and it freezes this year, that's first year ice. That's brand new ice, first year ice. That would be, as we see down here, zero to one year of age. Now let's say we, fought, we track that ice and it completely melts the following summer. Well, okay, we've lost that ice. But let's say in other situations, the ice that forms this year survives the summer melting and then it accretes when more water freezes and attaches itself to it so that the ice gets thicker. So now it has what? It has survived the first summer going into its second winter. Now we're getting into the zero to one, the one to two year realm. So when you start getting into sea ice that's four, five, six, seven years of age, that means it has survived four, five, six, seven summers. Well, we're seeing less and less of the four and older sea ice. The three to, excuse me, the three to four is becoming even less. And that's what these, these graphs are showing. So let's look here at, this is from data from August 27th to September 2nd of 1985. So this is 35 years ago. First of all, and here we are looking at September 2nd to, to, to the 8th of 2020. First of all, look at the extent. See how much, look over here. Basically, the, this is the East Siberian Sea, right? Here's the Laptev Sea, right? The Kara Sea, the Barents Sea, right here. One, two, three, four. See, look at the East Siberian Sea and in the extension into the Laptev Sea has drastically reduced. You can even see the same thing. This is the Beaufort, the Chukchi Seas. Drastically reduced. Drastically reduced. Now, this is an interesting plume because this is reflecting the freshwater input from the Mackenzie River, which having a lower salinity, it doesn't need to cool down as much to freeze. So we're seeing uh, some mixing effects that you can form the ice there. But the other thing to know here, see all this red? All this red? That's ice that's four, five, six, seven years of age. Here, and it makes sense that the youngest ice would be on the periphery. Right? That's, and then we get into the one to two, the three to four. Now you look over here and look how much more extensive the, the new ice is. Look how much drastically the four and older ice has disappeared. This is very telling right here. This is a great image, and thanks to Zach Lade for providing this. But th this tells you exactly what's going on with the Arctic sea ice. Right there. So I'm going to move on. To, you know, guys, if you want to pause the video and study this, go for it. I'm going to share with you the caption that the Zach shared with us. The ongoing loss of multi-year, which is old sea ice, is one of the most striking visuals of Arctic climate change. This is a tweet he sent out. Younger sea ice is generally thinner and more vulnerable to melt with numerous impacts of society and the polar ecosystem. And this is the NSIDC. 
And here's the URL for that, nsidc.org slash Arctic Sea Ice News, all one uh, thing, slash 2020, slash 10 lingering, so on and so forth. So you got the URL right there. Now let's look at the Laptep Sea Ice. And this blue line here, this light blue line here is the 2012 year. This red is 2020. For, for most of the time, basically say, oh, 2020 was the record lowest sea ice extent. Well, 2020 has supplanted that. 2020 is the new record holder for the lowest sea ice extent. So I'm going to bounce down real quick to show you the, uh, the description. So comparing 2020 and 2012 sea ice extents in Laptev Sea near Siberia, Note that the basin is geographically constrained so that the same maximum sea ice cover equals the flat line. Basically, once you fill in the basin, that's about as much as you're going to go. And nsidc.org, Arctic Sea Ice News, so that's a good uh, URL to get some uh, ongoing information. So what is going on here? Now, I like these graphs here because in other graphs, we see the individual years and you see a whole bunch of lines following this general pattern. What I like about this graph is, okay, this white line in the middle is the average. That's the average sea ice from 1981 to 2010. Okay. The lighter gray is plus and minus one standard deviation around the average, or average is also called the mean. Okay. The darker gray is plus or minus two standard deviations around the mean. Now, if you recall any basic statistical theory, you have the mean and then plus or minus one standard deviation accounts for 68% of the data, plus or minus uh, two standard deviations accounts for 95.44% of the data, and plus or minus three standard deviation accounts for 99.7% of the data. Okay. That's the uh, the 68, 95, uh, 99, uh, you know, that we usually toss around in the, to introductory statistics students. But so what this is saying is that from here to here, plus or minus one standard deviation, contains 68% of all sea ice ongoings. From here to here, down to here, is 95.44% of of the data, right? 90, so again, 68% of the data is contained within plus or minus one st standard deviation, 95.44% within uh, two standard deviations, plus or minus, and then 99.7% within plus or minus three standard deviations of the data. So when you see something like, let's start with the 2012, it starts out within, you know, two standard deviation, even within one standard deviation. So it's within 68, 95% of the data. And then by about uh, ooh, third or mid, mid halfway through July, it falls outside 95% of the data. This would be what we call significant. And it falls down, kind of tickles its way back into, uh, you know, within minus two standard deviation quickly drops back out so that by uh, the middle of September, we see at, uh, at that point, the lowest extent in million square kilometers. Comes back in just a bit within 95% of the data, but then quickly goes back out. And then when it gets up to here, then you have eyes uh, filling in the, the, uh, the geography there. Now look at 2020. It's well outside. I would venture to say it's outside plus, it's outside minus three standard deviation. And you can see that it reached practically, it, it's at zero. It is ice free from the near the end of August, almost a third of the way through October. Totally ice free. The ice is just now starting to form. But look how much lower it is. This, Zach Leib said, this is historic. 
it is. That means there's so much open water. Other thing to note, it started diving down. It started losing its ice extent considerably sooner than even when you compare, you know, when you compare it to 2012, come on, cursor, you know, it kind of tracks a little bit, but then 2012 stayed up here, all this just tanked, just completely tanked. And the fact that this is, you know, outside, definitely minus, minus two standard deviations from the mean, possibly three standard deviation, this is an extremely significant event. And when you have open water, open water is absorbing heat. It takes longer to cool down. Therefore, the any formation of ice will be delayed. And if it's delayed, it's going to the ice will be less will be thinner, and therefore less likely to survive its first summer, as I just showed you in the previous graphic. So this is this is just crazy. So again, the Laptev Sea, that's this region right here that's being considered. This is the East Siberian Sea. That's the Laptev. Kara Barents. This little thing called uh, Iceland. That's uh, Novaya Zemlya and Franz Josef Land. But they're talking, they're talking about this section right here. That's a big area. And the East Siberian Sea is also experiencing a similar uh, situation. Late freeze up, a lot of open water. In fact, when you look at the temperature regime, it is very, very much warmer over this part of the uh, Arctic Ocean. About 4C warmer than average. And by the way, they talk about the average from 81 to 2010. When January 1 rolls around of 2021, these averages will be reconfigured, recalculated to show from 1991 to 2020. So we have like a, a running 30 year average. And then you do uh, new comparisons and so forth. So I wanted to bring this to you. Very quick little. Uh, presentation here showing you how dramatic the ice loss is in the Arctic and what's going on there. Things are changing and they're changing rapidly. And some of the modeling are showing that will between 2022 and 2024, there will be absolutely no sea ice at all anywhere in the Arctic Ocean for at least a couple months of the year. They refer to it as a BOE, a blue ocean event. It used to be that, oh, if you got less than, uh, you know, you know, 100,000 square kilometers, okay. You know, you, you know, I still have ice, but if it was no more than that, it was considered ice free. In other words, if the ice uh, found was uh, centered around the North Pole right here, a very small distance. Well, now to say no ice at all. And there are some that say, okay, so we have the BOE uh, plus two, plus five, and plus 10. Plus two is saying that there will be no ice for four months of the year, plus five for eight months of the year, plus 10. The Arctic Ocean will be ice free year long, year round. In other words, what, the, what the, some of the models are saying is that by the mid-2030s, the Arctic Ocean will be ice-free year-round. So what happens, of course, now you got all the oil companies, let's go and get and go do some drilling, idiots. Now, there's been, uh, and I'll have this on a, a, another video, uh, but there's uh, some interesting little uh, debate going on about the BOE and the methane and the Arctic and all this kind of stuff. I'll cover that in a, another a video segment. But uh, I wanted to show you uh, this and show you how dramatic the situation is. This is a new record low for ice extent. And with that, we're probably having record low as far as multi-year ice 
and then basically being left with just young eyes. Stay tuned. Thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.